Hello, welcome to Clock Talk. I'm Crystal today on Tuesday morning. You know, the world is going crazy with so many um, discrimination and racial issues. Increasingly so, yes? So we're going to hone in on a little topic of that that's relevant to us here in Hawaii. Now, of course, minorities represent a majority in Hawaii, which is really interesting, I find. But honing into that minority within the Asian community, people of color, whatever that means, there are many, many more minorities within that group who are often overlooked and judged and um, just thrown into an invisible pile where their voice really doesn't mean much. And there's a lot of issues in terms of lack of support, um, education, and awareness both ways that we don't talk about. So today we're going to talk about this. And I'm delighted to invite my guests to um, open up our eyes and ears to this important issue of Micronesian women um, and their voices here in Hawaii. So at this time, let me introduce our wonderful guest, Josie Howard from We Are Oceana. Welcome, Josie. Thank you very much, Crystal, for inviting me to be on this show. Oh, pleasure. So please uh, educate us. I mean, first of all, uh, I claim ignorance to uh, the Micronesian culture myself. Mm -hmm. So can you give us a kind of a, a 101 on the history and why your culture has come to Hawaii and why you think there is that discrimination? Okay. Well, I think maybe first of all, you started out with the note of, you know, talking to a woman, a Micronesian woman. And I think that's a great place for me to start this conversation because uh, most of Micronesia is matrilineal. Uh, if you, um, you know, there's matrilineal, petrilineal, uh -huh. and that means that uh, our society is um, tra uh, it's, um, through a woman lineage. Mm. So it's the women who hold the lineages to their families. Uh, we have clan systems, mm -hmm. so the um, so I have a clan, right? And all my children belongs to my clan, not wow. their father's clan, wow. but my clan. And so the women is the one that reproduce the family and reproduce the lineage. So in terms of choices, big choices for the family, the woman gets to do that. Do you choose your partner for life, or how does that work? <laughs> <laughs> okay, those are that's a different story. But <laughs> okay. I mean, uh, jumping the long time ago, uh, there was this arrangement, you know, like marriage kind, oh, okay. and you know, we come from small societies, so yeah. uh, that was very common. But I think nowadays, when people go after school, like for me, I I chose my own, you know, okay. my my soulmate, or right. oh, I you know, that. I met my soulmate. Great, um, but. Um, Anyways, so with, what that means is uh, with, with a woman uh, being the family holder, mm -hmm. she also gives the children their status in the society because our clans um, also hold social status. Like each clan is known or it's known for their responsibility. Uh, there's a chief clan, so only the chief clan can produce chiefs on those islands or leaders in that you know, capacity. And then there are clans that are lined up to either be the guard for the chief or you know, the, the food pr producers uh -huh. or the, you know, the, um, the working class or right. working clan right. and things like that. So, so all the clan leaders are female? Uh, and, well, no. So that's another um, thing that it needs, <laughs> it needs to wish. be, <laughs> yeah, it needs to be, uh, you know, like explained and understood. And okay. I mean, our time is very short and this is a really huge uh, topic. Yes, I know. It could Thank be you. misled if I don't completely okay. explain it. But all I can say is that uh, the male are our public figures. Okay. And the woman, the sister and the brother, that's the, I would say that's the core of that relationship. And there's that mutual respect. There's that respect that a woman must respect her brother. Uh, and th her brother will be respected in the community. The brother respects the sister, she'll be respected in the community. And it's through that respect that um, kind of like build this whole system of respect. And, oh, that's uh, and great. yeah, and it's especially in the Chukis culture. Uh, the so that's a specific clan, or that's the area that you grew up in? Yeah, so I grew so up, yeah, so like for any decision making, like major decision making, um, usually like, uh, my my mother uh -huh. and her side of the family have that saying over over me okay. than my father's side because right. they own me okay. because I belong to their clan. Right. So, yeah. but the respect is a key word that respect rings is very yeah. large in your um, and holds everything together. So yeah. there's no like distinguishing in that way between the male and female power. It's it's a respect which yeah, brings everyone exactly. together. Yeah, exactly. Because if you do your part, you do your roles as the sister, mm -hmm. you are 
like people. you're the princess, you're the you're the chiefest, okay. and the brother will will put you on a pedestal. Meaning, uh -huh. like I mean, like sometimes people don't believe, but a sister can stop a, a fight. A sister can oh, stop I a war. Oh, I believe that. Yeah, sure. Okay. And like just her presence is yes. is uh, you know if she's a respectful sister, uh -huh. um, you know the brothers will. And they will, they cannot touch her husband because they respect her. So if there's yeah. such a close knit um, community within uh, yes. the Micronesian culture, w how do you think that's affected when everyone seems to be migrating more to places like Hawaii? I, I think that's very much affected. Even before we migrated, I mean, people that came to study us uh, and came to visit us, they uh, right away make the conclusion that, oh, these women are oppressed. I mean, they cannot move around. Their brothers are ordering them or huh. you know, the men do all the talking and the women just sat there. Uh, and it's a totally misleading. <laughs> Why do you think that came about? Uh, it's, it's just, you know, something. people observing and, you know, mm. when you don't have the perspective. When they don't I mean, hear your real voice, yeah, right? Yeah, when you don't know, you, when you come with your own perspective of a different culture mm. and you impose that on that culture you're watching, mm. of course, it's going to be biased to what you believe in, right? So yes. the story you gather is according to your understanding, your interpretation. So people who don't understand mm. the Micronesian culture, what are some mis, uh, or some misconceptions and generalizations, gross generalizations that are wrong that you would like to voice out now? Um, well, I think the notion that we all come here to just leave off, you know, like mm. the welfare system mm. and, uh, you know, we come, come to like take advantage of the money in Hawaii. Uh, a lot of us are not uh, eligible for a lot of the, you know, the benefits like food stamp and, you know, WIC and uh, welfare and things like that uh, because of our uh, migrant or our uh, status. So what is the status? status? Is that a very new, unique kind of situation? It, yes? it, is, it is a very unique. I mean, the Compact of Free Association mm -hmm. is one of, one of, I think, like very few in the world that is between the United States and the Federated States of Micron I mean, not only Federated States of Micronesia, but Re Republic of the Marshall Islands and Republic mm -hmm. of Palau. And um, it's a unique treaty uh, that uh, I think is not fully understood and uh, people are still struggling to interpret the terms of this treaty. Mm. And I think most of the time that interpretation is also like, uh, can be taken wrong and can be also like, you know, so at one point when I first moved out here to uh, How further my education. How long ago education, was that when you moved here? That was in 1989. Okay. Um, and I would travel every year here to get my uh, work permit when under my, under my status uh -huh. or citizenship, I should not, you know, need that because I'm a, you know, COFA citizen. Right. But I had to come or else they would stop us from working. I went with, I mean, like weeks without working. Um, and the only way I survived was I would work with some of our counselors, uh, do like, you know, yard work and they pay me uh, $20. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you feel, I mean, let's talk a little bit about the discrimination mm -hmm. uh, that you felt personally and mm -hmm. maybe your, your community feels here and, and why and how we can do something about that. Um, I think there's a lot of factor and, con you know, fac contributing factor to it, but a lot of it is like I think it's misunderstanding and misinterpretation of things. Um, and also the fact that, um, you know, we as Micronesians have gone through traumatic change in just a short period of time. Uh, we also have gone through, you know, like different colonial powers that have reshaped and affected us. And then all of a sudden World War II happened and World War II finished and it started the nuclear testing mm, and mm. all these things were just boom, boom, boom happening. And we did not have a chance to breathe and yeah. to take in this um, these changes, and when you talk about cultural trauma, and uh. when you talk about you know all these uh, things that ha happen to a particular group of people, where in it in uh, how do you call disrupt their whole life mm. system. Yeah, um, we're just beginning to kind of get a hold of ourselves, and then now boom, we have to you know become a nation, and we have to because this world is all becoming globalized and. In a way, it's like a big wave, mm. and the wave is just rolling. And whatever, wherever that wave is, uh, it it you know it 
it brings in all these islands. So no matter what we think, we're like isolated, we're out in the Pacific, but we are part of this world. Absolutely. And yeah. that's the sad thing is because sometimes your culture is so um, invisible yes. on the world stage. I like how you say it. They invisible. feel like you don't need a voice because exactly. it's not, it doesn't exist. And my God, if we had only, I mean, I had no clue. When you say cultural drama, I think it just is such a loaded comment. I mean, to, to even have any concept of what, what you were just pushed out of uh, your, your homeland and then coming here to a place where there's such a desperate lack of support. Yeah. Um, and so you built this community here. What is the community like? What? Oh, I didn't build it. Well, <laughs> but, but you're part of it. Um, <laughs> I'm sure you're well, part of building it. Well, part of the reason why I am involved in this work is because of my own experience. When I came out, I didn't feel, I mean, I felt like I was uh, just like, you know, right into this fresh water that I don't know. Yeah. And um, there was a lot of things that I had to learn the hard way. Like what? Um, for example, like I came with $200 and I thought oh, that gee. was enough money. <laughs> and I mean, coming from a small island, yeah. live off the land and no money. Yeah. My parents didn't, you know, have any uh, income, but uh, I was uh, helped by, you know, like family. Yeah, and our sure. family is so important. And that's the, you know, that's our foundation of uh, how we survive. But yes. So they, I didn't see how money was important because everybody was taking care of me, paying for my tuition for high school and, right, you know. Right. And so when I came and finally I was on my own and I was like, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I had to pay for, you know, like my food, my yeah. dorm, my, you know, my beddings and my clothes. Yeah. And, and I, you know, I enrolled in, um, I joined the softball team and I couldn't have the right shoes because Aww. I didn't have the money to right. buy the shoes. And it was just like, it was really eye-opening for Real me. Real awakening. Yeah. Yeah, in and so many ways and yeah. for as, a, as a woman too as, and uh, as a woman like I'm supposed to be protected right by yes. my brothers huh. and I'm like now yeah, all of a sudden own. I'm out there on my own and so I had to uh, one cultural shock that I remember was dealing with being by myself and having a room by myself because I'm so used to having my family around sure and that was like shocking I would uh, like I would get so homesick and I would run out of the room and just want to be with my friends and um, yeah and so from that and we actually in college we created a group that we kind of found ourselves as a family oh, we good. call ourselves the back tribe the back tribe back tribe back pacific tribe. island tribe okay. yeah and it was uh, my classmates from all over the pacific like okay. from samoa western samoa from tonga from kiribati from solomon islands from uh, uh cook islands you know yeah, uh, yeah. all over yeah. vanuatu Great. and so we we have this common thing was which was our culture the food we like we love to yeah. eat the same kind of food we like to go fishing and yeah. so we just found the that like you know and yeah. the displacement being here exactly. at together and, is, is exactly. a huge thing yeah. and then our hawaiian friends were also there to you know kind of nurture us and help us right. okay we can go there we can go there and i think that that was the key for my success in college having these right people around me mm -hmm. and uh and i was able to I was able to go through all or, you know, like hurdle through all sure, those. Sure, uh, it makes you a stronger person. Yes. But I want to ask mm -hmm. you what, how much you think the importance of education plays in who you are today and you having the gift of coming here, but having the brevity to, to face all these obstacles and come across and, and, and you know, rise above all this. I don't know if, uh, you know, any other Pacific Islanders will relate to me, but for me, I think it's very, very important. I would not realize um, my colonized mind if I was not being educated. Yes. Um, I would not be able to decolonize, you know, how I think. And right. I used to think my culture was suck, you know, like I used to think, oh my gosh, I need to move off this island. I need to stop wearing this lava lava. And, you know, I want I, I, I'm tired of cooking with this firewoods and, you know, all these things. I want to go and just sit on that you know sofa like in the tv and you know when you start yeah, seeing yeah, all these things yeah. and and when people come from abroad you know they look really cool and yeah. all that so i thought that was the so you distinguished thing. and you yeah. actually appreciate your culture yeah. so that importance of that detail of education just says everything exactly. we're going to take a quick break when we come back we're going to introduce this we are oceana and what it's all about and how we bring about the importance and the support for women like you it's amazing all right don't go away please thank you Aloha Kako, I'm Marcia Joyner, inviting you to navigate the journey with us. We are here every Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. and we really want you to be with us where we look at the options and choices of end-of-life care. 
Aloha. Aloha. I am Reg Baker, and I am the host of Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30 in the Think Tech studios in downtown Honolulu. We highlight successful stories about businesses and individuals and learn their secrets to success. I hope you can join us on our next show on Thursday at 2 o'clock. Until then, aloha. Back here on Quok Talk, uh, talking with Josie Howard about uh, the fascinating culture of Micronesian uh, people and their plight of coming here and trying to struggle with many, many issues. So again, back to Josie, uh, we had a little glimpse of your life, your background, a little taste, but just not even close mm -hmm. to understanding at all. But coming here and having these issues, um, let's talk a little bit about We Are Oceana, this, this organization and its effort to promote support mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. Micronesians. Yes. Um, well, uh, since I graduated from college, I moved here, I you know, got married and have my family. I notice, you know, the uh, increasing number of Micronesians coming to Hawaii, and what I, are the numbers actually? Uh, right now, yeah, there's about like fifteen to seventeen thousand. As opposed to when you first came, what was the? Oh, it was maybe like not even in the hundreds. Oh wow! Yeah. So okay. Yeah, maybe I'm not aware of other people, but like uh, the community that I come from, Chuk. Yeah. Uh, it was. I think there was like few families that were here. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So there's a very decent community here. Yeah. All right? it was, and it was hard to see each other, and you know you could still get, get homesick. But yeah, of course. Um, when I saw that, I started to notice. I started to feel that oh, you know, like looking into my own experience, I thought uh, these people would be needing, you know, like help with acculturation, mm -hmm. uh, understanding the procedures here. Because I, I mean, it's very different. The system here is different. Uh, it's way advanced. Uh, there's social systems, there's, you know, DOH, there's DOE and all this. Mm -hmm. Back home, I was only aware of DOH. Mm -hmm. uh, DOE, Which is what, for people who don't know what that um, means? That's Department of Health okay. and Department of Education. Okay. And um, I think for social services, I don't remember any at that time. Maybe mm -hmm. for uh, legal aid, mm -hmm. um, you know, so, uh, what do you call it, legal aid society. Uh -huh. um, and so there's no child welfare service and things like that. So that uh, really brought me or, uh, you know, to realize that we're going to need help. Um, there was a call from the schools to help them understand the students. This was in 2001. When you say understand the students, you mean that the school, the teachers, the administration, they don't care to, or they just don't have the knowledge to understand yes. where they're coming from. Yes, totally. I mean, they were like they were just having so much hard time. They didn't understand why there is so much uh, absences, you uh -huh. know, like tardiness and um, you know, uh, lack of participation with parents yeah. and things like that. Um, is the group mostly from a certain different area? Are they all over the place? These are all or? Pacific Island students. These are all okay. like Micronesians and there's Samoans in there. Uh -huh. I think there's also Tongans. Right. But like you um, said, it's a similar uh, yes, yes, issues. Yes. 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 Okay. Um, but um, yeah, so that's actually when uh, I started to get involved. Uh, we started this group, a small group of us. We just found each other that uh -huh. we were, you know, we had the same uh, common passion to okay. help. Right. And we used to go to the school and do acculturation for the teachers. And uh -huh. then uh, we kind of grew and uh, they asked us to do it statewide. And, and then we also form ourselves and call ourselves the MCAP, Micronesian Cultural Awareness Program. That's great. Yeah. And to bring that, speaking yeah. of culture, is, you know, like, like even this photo with the So this is an yeah. example of, uh, you know, teaching the teachers how ah. to weave the baskets so that they can use that to connect with the students in the classroom so that the students can be familiar with what they're, the, you know. Right. And uh, that's math, that's uh -huh. science, that's, uh, that's language. That's wonderful. Everything, yeah. And so it brings them involved with the culture, yes, yes. not just hearing something. Yes, and I think yes. going back to one of your aspects of um, when you first came here, is you almost felt shameful of the culture and yes. all of that. But you know, if you embrace it and you're proud of your culture, it really brings in so much richness. Well, there were two things that brought me to that. One okay. was my Hawaiian friend who taught me about her history, okay. which really changed my, you know, my perspective. I was like, what? You have to learn your language again? What? You have to hide to dance your hula? And uh, that like got me to realize, oh my gosh, this is what's happening to me, but right. in a different way. Right. You know, not dramatically like how they overthrown the you know the Hawaiian uh, kingdom. Yeah. But for us, it's like slowly. You know, this whole 
education thing, you know, everything is in the Western perspective. And not to say it's a bad thing, but it's just changing people. And, uh, and then the second thing was my uh, anthropology course. Uh -huh. So my family actually sent me off to become a doctor. After I took my anthropology course, I met my Hawaiian friends and I learned more about the Hawaiian history. It, I began to start shifting my, my thinking and thinking that a doctor is not what's really needed because I started to understand I need technology to, you know, to do all this doctor work. The island does not even have huh, okay. uh, electricity. So right? Yeah, there's no electricity. There's no running water and all those wow. things. So yeah. I started to realize, you know what? I cannot be a doctor back home. But maybe a I can in be a, a, a doctor in a different way. You're healing in a very yes. organic Which way. Which was to kind of bring awareness to yes. our own culture and empower you know, our own culture and, and value yeah. that that is our being. And, you know. I can feel that something like that is a problem with many, many cultures, especially with the younger generation, mm -hmm. because there's a part of them who that want to break away because they don't want to be associated with all the bad reputation mm -hmm. of anything that brings them down. So they, they go the other way and rebel, mm -hmm. yes? And I did. I think I went through that too. There mm -hmm. was a time when I, sh I was shamed of right. peop my people who acted, you know. Right, But right. then now I, I have this remorse feeling. I feel bad because I mm -hmm. feel like, because of and, and it's in it on both sides. So like when you talk about discrimination, yeah. when people discriminate against uh, against us, I feel that it is because of lack of awareness. Yes. It's ignorance. You know, people right. are just not aware. We're so connected as human beings. Yes. And I mean like even culture wise, there's yeah. so many, you know, connecting Absolutely. common things that we exactly. connect we're connected on. And it's so sad and yeah. ironic that in the United States we're so segregated I you know, know it really drives I me know. crazy because i was in asia for so many years and i come back here and it's like why is this an issue and why is it increasing yeah. as an issue yeah. so increasing awareness is what you keep saying yes. how do we do that here um i think i mean i don't know but i like what i do so far like what what we do with where our oceania is just you know continue to advocate and i continue to go out in the community i agree to come to talk because i think getting this message out is important for if i can at least touch one person today yeah that's i think success you're going to touch more uh, than one person today and um <laughs> speaking of which you have an upcoming event from yes. we are ocean let's hear yes. about that okay so we have an upcoming event uh, it's <laughs> called the youth summit and let's bring it up so people yes. can see that. Yeah? So the theme of our event is navigating success. Uh-huh. Uh, we have the word, this is the map of Micronesia. See, I don't even know they have these words. That's yeah, crazy. so these are all the different languages in Micronesia. This is the language map of Micronesia. Wait, wait so wait, let's, so let's show oh. the, uh, um, that first, the okay. information on the So it's this flyer. Saturday uh, at the Ballroom UH Manoa Campus Center uh -huh. from 8 a.m. to 2.30, I mean, to 3 o'clock actually. Yeah. It's open to the public? Uh, it's, it's by registration. So okay. it's open to uh, any Micronesian students or ESL students uh -huh. uh, who are age 6th um, grade to 12th okay, grade. Okay, so you're focusing on youth. So we're yes, just saying youth. educating exactly. the younger generation. Yes. But they have to want to come, right? Oh my gosh, you won't believe. Really? We are so, uh, like I'm just excited yeah. from getting all this registration coming in. Yeah. Uh, I've, oh, good. We've never, like... I told you that I work in the education yes, system. I've never yes. seen that kind of excitement. Good. Even the schools are so supportive now. Yeah, like yeah. Um, we were struggling to come up with money to be able to pay for our buses. Well, uh, now I think three or four buses are being paid for by the school. So Great. Wainai High School is providing their own bus. Waipahu High School, um, Waipahu Intermediate, Dole Middle School, um, you're, so foc you're focusing on schools that have a larger community of Micronesian students? No, we're students? inviting everyone. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. So we're targeting all the high schools. Right. And again, yeah. it's navigating means, you know, you're yes. searching for that. Can, yes. I, can we just bring this up again because we had the flyer earlier. Yes. I'm really curious to know so, what all the different... Okay, so um, it, we, if we start from there, this is Palawan. I don't know we can zoom I in cannot, on that. I, don't, I, I cannot uh, pronounce it, you oh, know. That's so, okay. But, oh, I've been to Palau, Amegal, I think, Amegal. but no, I don't know. So There's that means navigating success. Paru is the other island of Palau. Uh -huh. uh, Bilu is Yap. Palu, the other island of Yap. And then it moves down to you know, Chuk and Where are Kunbe. you from? Where are you from? I'm from Chuk, so we say Palu. Palu is yeah. Chuk. And the lagoon, they say Peru. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm, I'm from the other island. So if you see the similarity... I'm uh -huh. more, you know, our language is more similar. Uh -huh. uh, Peru, and then as you move toward Pone Bay, you know, you, uh, you'll see a little bit shift, but th 
the word Padu is kind of, and then we come all the way to uh, Nauru and Kiribati. So and this all is the these islands. different islands. Oh, that's Marshall Islands. Yeah. Remeto. What is that? Uh, Remeto is, is navigating the, success. Oh, I see. Yeah. It's the language of In their... The, yes. I see. Yes. So all the translation of this okay. is here. That's and wild that there's so many different languages and cultures that yes. we have no clue yes. about. And, and to bring them all together. Yes. On behalf of We Are Oceana, to yes. do something for the youths to understand how you are all connected is, is really quite exactly. um, inspiring. What do you hope to achieve or what do you hope to see changed in the near future? Uh, well, we hope that the direction of things will change for us, meaning that we will be able to, um, uh, there will be less discrimination against us. You know, there will be, we'll have a voice uh, in terms of. Um, you know, when it comes to policy, right now we're struggling with health um, coverage. We're no longer eligible for MedQuest, except for our children, our kupunas, our, you know, the um, pregnant women and the disabled. Uh, but we work and we pay tax. Right. You know, and, and yet your so, citizenship is not 100%. There's something yes, very odd yes. about it, right? So I think with more of our children, now we also, um, we're mobilizing our 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 youth yes. to vote. These are U.S. citizens, ah. um, a lot of them born and raised here. Right. So uh, last, uh, last election, we actually registered 95 of them to vote. Okay, good. Yeah, so we're, we're starting to vote. Yes. Yeah. So the younger generation will bring yeah. this, their, their knowledge yes. in yes. and their power of a voice to yes. increase that, yes. that influence yes. onto not just Hawaii, but again and yeah know. i mean whatever success we do here yeah. it's going to impact back home and so part of our goal is also to impact back home and to help like you know making the transition of migration better and and more ready to go out to you know the western world uh i think we cannot get rid of migration with global warming rising i That's mean a huge uh, it's scare. yeah it's going to continue and it's also the nature of human beings yeah everybody's a migrant <laughs> i mean everybody that, you migrated. Know what? that is the key to yeah. the issues today uh, yeah. josie i'm sorry we run out of time yes. but the fact that you say that everyone's a migrant just says it all and and how much incredibly ignorant we are about the cultures out there that we need to uh, allow ourselves to bring in to uh, enrich and to uh, develop that knowledge and so that we can have compassion and support for people, mm -hmm. not just Micronesians, but many, many, many mm -hmm. um, minority groups. So Josie, thank you so much for coming on. Good luck with your upcoming thank thing. You. It sounds great. Thank Good luck you. to all the youth out there supporting, uh, again, these uh, your group and your voice and uh, really, really precious stuff. Well, next time, come on and just talk about your culture. Okay. okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Bye. You, Bye.